Dear friends, dear colleagues, it is a pleasure for me and it is an honor to present to you this night Edgar Bormann. And uh, I will not make a big introduction, I just say one word only. He was the director of the CNRS, which is the National Center for Social Research in Paris. And uh, after our keynote, we will have an um, award ceremony because the Bertrand Center for the Study of System Sciences decided to award him um, with an award in complexity thinking. And what he is going to talk about today is uh, the ways of thinking uh, which are um, um, <coughs> needed uh, to overcome the crisis in which we live. So, uh, we will have a laudatio in which also your whole life will be uh, uh, told, so I don't say anything. It is now your turn. Thank you so much, Edgar. Thank you very much. <coughs> Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have two preliminary things to tell. The first is you, you can see in the program Edgar Morin, independent scientist. It is true I am independent of mind, but I have a career in the National Center of Scientific Research in France. I am director of research in this, uh, in this center. The second preliminary, uh, you will remark immediately my bad English. <clears throat> and I remember that uh, some years ago, uh, I made a conference in Denmark and I was obliged to speak English. And uh, I drink uh, two aquavit before to speak. <coughs> and I speak and, uh, before people and it was a minister of education of Denmark. And uh, at the end of his speech, he said, oh, it is the first time in my life that I understand French. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe I hope that you understand my French. <laughs> my first point is system is complex, system is complexity. <clears throat> In what sense? In what sense a complexity is a sense of connections of many parts of things that seems separate in the classical vision of science, disciplinary vision. And <clears throat> uh, the system is a unity of diversity of parts. And as we, the first definition of complexity given by IB, complexity is a grade of diversity of a system. So many diverse are as a part, so great is the complexity of the system. It was the first definition important of complexity in a scientific field. But <coughs> I say that system is complex in a logical science. Because when you see complex problem, you see immediately the limits of classical logic. <coughs> and we can say that a system is in the same time more and less than the sum of the parts. It's more than the sum of parts, that is a well known from Aristoteles. But it's very interesting because it's evident that the system uh, 
has some qualities or properties that you cannot find in the path separates. The qualities come from the organization of the system. But the system in the same time is less than the sum of the part in the sense that it has constraints, inhibitions, and that make that some qualities or property of the past cannot express them, are inhibited or prohibited. It's evident in a social systems we have, uh, as individuals, many uh, possibilities for qualities uh, for the good or for the crime, which we cannot express because the law, because uh, we are in the, in the in a culture with the, the obligations of culture. And uh, it's evident that it's a classical logic. It is a limit because we understand that more or less more or less is a metaphor. But the interesting thing is that the more has a signification of new qualities called emergences. Emergence, qualities that emerge of a system. But the interesting thing is that those qualities are not deductible from the examination of the uh, different parts. It is an indeductibility. We must observe that. We must constate that. But we cannot end it signifying the limit, a limit to the best of logic, deductive logic. <coughs> and I can say that system is the basis of complex knowledge. <coughs> it's the basis <coughs> in the sense that when we begin to see the classical science, uh, with a critical view, we see that, uh, in fact, objects, the objects of science are closed objects, simple objects. But in fact, all the objects of science are systems. Uh, the cells are systems of molecules. Molecules are systems of atoms. Atoms systems of particles and uh, finally particles maybe are not systems but are very irrational things because uh, in the sense they are in the same time contradictory with encore the shoes and they are <coughs> and uh, they are a, a paradox, logical paradox. And in fact, uh, classical knowledge don't see that the objects are complex and don't see that the objects are in a context because the, <coughs> the, the disjunction, because the Classical science has two principles. The principle of disjunction and principle of reduction. Disjunction makes the separation of the disciplines, and inside the disciplines of micro disciplines, resolve connections between them, and it is very it's quite impossible to see, to connect the object of knowledge with the environment, with the context. And we know, we know in the language, 
that we cannot understand the sense of a text without the context. If your beloved, beloved wife said to you, darling, it is not the same sense that if a prostitute in the street tells you, darling, you know, the context is totally different. And it is important that connectivity, to connect, it is the principle of complexity when fundamental, this principle is signifying always necessity of <coughs> connection. <coughs> yeah, I think that uh, today the classical science is, is in crisis in many, many fields, in uh, microphysics, in, in cosmophysics, in biology, in many fields. But the structure of mind don't make the change of paradigm, of principle of knowledge. That is said, the problem. <coughs> And you know that the crisis of classical science begin with a, a, a bridge a, in the great principle of universal determinism. It was uh, the eruption in the 19th century of the second principle of thermodynamics is uh, not only in principle of irreversibility that introduced The time in this physics were were always reversible, but in the time introduce disorder, randomness, and the determinism is reconstituted in statistically and not at the level of individual atoms or molecules. It's a principle of disintegration, of dispersion. But it is very strange that we can see in the universe, we can make the constellation of this principle of disintegration. We know that stars are disintegrated. We know our our sun will die in five billion of years, we know, we know in the universe uh, dispersion, and it's evident, but in the same time, we see in the universe creation of organization. Because in the, from the beginning, with a great dispersion, great thermodynamic event, be called Big Bang, maybe, This process of agitation makes the destruction of anti-matter. And, uh, but at the same time, same destruction of encounter of uh, particles, but in the same time, encounter making the connection, making the first uh, atoms, and uh, after in uh, various suns, anterior our suns, the making of the atoms of carbon and so on. We, do, we say that uh, in the universe it is a process of production of complex matter, complex organization, and finally, in our planet, complexity, of living organization, living system. And uh, why it is impossible in this vision separate to understand for one part the process of disintegration and for all other part, part the process of organization. But in fact, there are the same, there are a unit, there are a conjunction. It is a process of order, this disorder, 
making organization. So principle of order and with encounter a randomness, make new organization. And <coughs> that is the great problem of the complexity of the universe, but it is impossible to see that if you see only the second principle, principle of death, disintegration, and if you see only the process of uh, production of complexity. <coughs> and <coughs> that is very interesting to see that life, yeah. life, it is a, 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 it is a, a problem, a new, a complex type of system. Uh, organization of life is more complex that organization of molecular organization, but but this organization is made only with molecules of the current universe. It is not a, a matter, matter, a life, living matter. The life it is not a question of matter. The matter is a normal physical or chemical. Life is a quality of a complex self organization. <coughs> and uh, this complex self organization has created the properties called life. Life is a compound of some properties of self reproduction, of self reparation, of knowledge, of process of uh, uh, with a, a memory. Uh, with the capacity to transform it in a program for DNA, for protein, and so on. <coughs> life is a, a, the problem of life is self-organization, capacity of produce itself and uh, reproduce itself. But <coughs> but von Förster, who was a genius. Uh, in the matter of uh, thinking uh, of cybernetic system in order. Cybernetic, von Furster, noted that it is a paradox to say self organization <coughs> because, by example, the organization of life, life, needs perpetually energy. Because I need energy, even when I sleep. Energy, my heart, energy, my pulmons too, my blood. So, when I, uh, <coughs> I use energy in all moments of my life. In my <coughs> but uh, it is necessary to reconstruct the, the degradation of energy. Is the second principle, need we must take energy from environment. We need to uh, <coughs> nurture. We need to eat. We need to take material things for reconstitute energy. And we need also knowledge of the environment. I think that the knowledge of the organization of the environment and <coughs> self-organization or auto-organization is in the same time auto-eco-organization <coughs> with the signification that autonomy, the autonomy of living being like us, Autonomy needs always dependency. We need to be dependent. <coughs> and if I become very autonome with my computer, you know, that my computer depends of energy and depends of, of the connection with the red. Okay. And uh, no autonomy without dependence. And that, that is always 
a paradox, a logical paradox of complexity. You see that complexity needs always to uh, go more away that classical logic. <coughs> and that is inter the thing is interesting, and it is this moment I see that uh, is a moment when the two notions of, uh, of BNR uh, are uh, indispensable <coughs> to understand uh, living systems on many uh, complex systems <coughs> is a uh, retroactive loop. It is a problem of retroactive loop. And that is very interesting because the negative feedback, eliminate the deviations and maintain the homeostasy uh, of a system, you know. And uh, that is and the homeostasy and autonomy. <coughs> but it's evident that it's, it's, and uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the cybernetics is the first element fundamental to eliminate linear causality and to give the possibility, the scientific possibility to speak of autonomy, because even in the system, uh, in the system, in the thermical system, uh, for eating a, a, an apartment, you know, uh, you have the, <coughs> the thermostat that indicates the effect of the temperature, that the retraction in the cause, and it is a, it is a the, the loop. <coughs> But more interesting than the uh, uh, retroactive loop, is a recursive loop. What signification of recursive in the sense that I tell because not exactly the mathematical science says. <coughs> a recursive process is a process where the effects or the products are necessary to the causation and to the production. By example, we we have the products of a process, sexual genetical process of reproduction, you know, coming from the union of a spermatozoid and, and, uh, and of, you, of your father and your mother. You are the, the product of the process of reproduction. But the process of reproduction needs you personally as a productor or co-productor with a, another person to make the process. We are the product and productor. And <coughs> the same in the society. In the society, society is a product of the interactions between individuals. But the society with the emergencies, with the culture, with the, old, with the language, retroact in the individual and to achieve the better achievement of the humanity. We are product and product of, of the society. And uh, <coughs> this notion of uh, recursivity is very important to all the process of self-production. And <coughs> we can see the <coughs> The, the problem of human complexity. Human complexity, 
has two, two sense. In the first sense, we are obliged to give a definition of human in a trinitary way. That is the Holy Trinity. You know, in the Holy Trinity, the Father produces Holy Spirit that produces the Son, and the, the Son uh, makes the regeneration of the Father, making it more, more sweet, you know, you have a process like that. But humanity, you have the species, biological, human is a species. You have the individual, you have society. But it is not three parts juxtaposed. No, it is not 30% of each. The totality of species with the genes which uh, inside us and inside my brain when I am speaking, the totality of the and the, I think that the totality of society of not quantitatively, but society as a whole is inside myself, like the language, the culture, the roots, and so on and so on. You know, I am in the society, society is inside me. I am in the biological species, but the biological species is inside me, <coughs> and it is the trinity. And each term generates the other and is regenerated by the other. You have the recursive loop perpetually. It is for that that the complexity of human can be, re be reduced. Reductivity, reductionism said that we are the individuals in society and in space. See, inside. We are not the connection, and complexity is to understand the type of connection. And you see something very important in the complex system like the human species, humanity. <coughs> that I say not only the path is inside the world, the world but the world is inside the path. Each cell of my hand contains the totality of the genetic message of my whole my body. But some parts are inevitable, really. But the world, the world is present in each part of my body. And it is, I can, we can say, we can call that hologrammatic principle, because like in the hologram, when you have the hologram, hologram don't take point by point of the image. It, it takes, you know, each point of the hologram contains a, a great part of the totality of the image. Uh, I, if I pay the hologram of a car, I put the hologram in two, I have no two middle car, I have two cars, more little. Because the hologrammatic principle, it is the same, the wall is inside each part. <coughs> but <coughs> I continue with the human complexity. <coughs> and it is important today to remember the, the complex anthropology because uh, the definition of homo sapiens that man is reasonable being is sufficient to have in the same time two polarities reason and homo demens folly madness madness but the madness is not exceptionally. We, we become mad when we are angry, when we are in a state of furor, 
you are a madness of the great conquerors. You have the, the, this type of madness that the old Greeks called the hubris, uh, the demesirate, and maybe we are in an epoch of, of uh, political madness. But it's interesting to see that you have the two polarity. But you, are, you don't have a pure religion. And it is a Damasio, and John to give Vincent makes a demonstration that even in the more rational intellectual movement, you are always a excitation of emotions with the brain imagery discover that uh, even the mathematician making the more mathematical abstract work is uh, passionate for the mathematics and uh, we cannot uh, we have emotion we have passion and the problem is uh, when you have passion without reason you become mad but when you are reason I say reason it is another type of Madness, we always make a dialectic eh, between don't forget, never forget reason in passion, never forget passion in reason. But other thing, the definition of human is homo faber, definition by the tool, you know, by techniques, evident, evident. But in the prehistory, eh, Neanderthalian too, there is a sense of life after the death, life of genius, of spirits, and you have religions in all society, all culture. I think that Homo mythologicus is so important that Homo faber, the capacity to make mythos, to make to the imagination, to imaginary. Is a, is, a, is a thing fundamental for humanity. And you are not only homo economicus, what is the creation of modernity, making the, the, acting only for the self-interest, because you have the play, the game, you have the breathing out, right, homo ludens, and uh, it is, and humanity, is all, the, all this, these possibilities. We cannot make a, a politique by example thinking that men are uh, only reasonable. No, they are reasonable, they are mad. But if you will not make a politique thinking that men are only mad, no, <laughs> they are reasonable too. You cannot make that uh, men are good, no, because they are bad things that can. Uh, Madness can develop, and, and, and we can make a politics in that the mind. All these are bad and make only constraints, but it is false. Human complexity needs a vision complex of politics, and uh, that is uh, the difficulty. <coughs> but I wanted one thing. <coughs> I think that. Uh, we have to also two other polarities in life. The polarity of prose, the polarity of poetry, poetry. And uh, Oderlin said, but most of us of all Oderlin, poetically, man is living in the earth, you know? And uh, yes. Poetry significa communion, exaltation of himself, pleasure, ecstasy, all the things that uh, expand the life, you know. And pause it is the things that we are obliged to make, but without uh, joy, without pleasure. And we life is part of it, the uh, uh, truth. And it is important to understand the great need of people, that men need, the uh, need is uh, to satisfy their needs fundamental to survive, but 
to survive is necessary, but to, 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 to the life, uh, life is more than survive. Life is expansion of the capacities in the communion and so on. And <coughs> Another point, very interesting, that uh, if man is a so a member of a species, human species, who for part of the primate, primate making part of the mammiferian, mammiferian making part of vertebrian, vertebrian making part of other uh, animals and animals making part of. Western civilization has totally forget the deep relation, the vital relation <coughs> between humanity and the living environment, biosphere, ecosystems. I forget why. First, maybe it is it all begins in, in the Bible. Because in the Bible, God makes a separate creation of man, because he makes man as his image, you know. Man as the image of God, and the animals are totally separate in the creation. But it is mainly the development of Western civilization in the 17th century after that makes a great separation. Descartes said that the science must make man the master of nature and the Marx, Buffon, Marx, and so on, and think that the man may be the, the dominator, make, uh, can manipulate all the things of nature, all the living beings. And he forgets that this manipulation conducts finalement not only at the degradation of the biosphere, but the problem of its own degradation and uh, the problem of the sense of the civilization, for our civilization. I will speak about that a little more in some, uh, in some time. <coughs> and we can say that, uh, that if we if we think of complexity, complexity presents a logical paradox. And uh, Heraclitus, a philosopher of five centuries before our era, said that uh, living by death, dying by life, dying by life. It's evident finally we, we die. But living by death is very interesting. It is signified not only we must uh, kill animals to eat them. No. Now we know that uh, our cells in our body uh, are self-destructing at all moments to let place to the new cells. Because you have the, the regeneration of the cells, creation of new cells, you know, because we, we, we are living by the death of cells, and the regeneration of cells makes the continuation of life. You know. And uh, the life to fight against the death make utilization of death inside to be stronger with the front of death. But finally, death uh, win, but it's very interesting, this type of uh, relations. And also paradox of, uh, in, the, in the physical world, <coughs> it is uh, the paradox of the Separability go with the inseparability. It is the same that a wave or co particle, corpuscle, you know. But it is not only a paradox of microphysics. We 
à séparer laïc individuals, but we make part of a continuity, continuity of, of life, of the species, continuity of society. Nisbor understands that for well. He said it is not only a paradox for microphysics, it's a general paradox. We are product and producer, where the cause and the effects, the effects become a cause, life and death, and uh, <coughs> this element makes, that gives a sense of the complexity must uh, affront the logical problem and with what I, tell, I call Dialogic. Dialogic, dialogic signifie la de insuffisant, une, the union of two antagonist terms to understand some complex problem. And <coughs> I think that <coughs> before to, to arrive to our present world. I want to say that, uh, finally, complexity, it is not only problems that we encounter when we try to understand, to understand the world, to understand the life, to understand ourselves. Complexity is also a mode of knowledge when we integrate some principles, such as the principle of uh, retroactivity, of recursivity, of connectivity, of programmaticity, and dialogical principles. You know. It is a way of thinking. It is, it is that, that don't understand people making uh, investigation in the complex systems. They study complex systems with many random, with uncertainty, randomness, theory of chaos, you know. But they don't change the mind. They don't change the structure of mind. Complexity needs a change, a paradigmatic change. <coughs> and uh, I want to say, One point before to arrive I will the problem actual world. The, <laughs> we must consider the ecology of action. What signifies? It is a signification. One decide to make an action, the action escape to your will because it enter in a play of interactions, retroaction and so on, it can take away because it's contrary to the way that you respect. And <coughs> that is also occur. So more frequently, in the history, you know, the French Revolution, the beginning, the prelude of French Revolution, was an aristocratic reaction to recuperate the power that had lost during the absolute monarchy of Louis XIV, and saying that the convocation of General state, état généraux, représentant of nobile aristocracy, of clergy, of church, and of the third estate, other poverty, and uh, generally uh, the vote was by order. It is was the majority for the church and for the aristocracy. And this, this time, in 1789. Uh, the third state imposed the decision to vote by aid and the change totally the majority. But always, all the, 
the decision to, uh, to Hitler uh, finally uh, makes the contrary of the way uh, the Soviet Revolution finally arrives at the contrary of the intentions. Always, always the ecology of action said to us that uh, don't they? But what, what can we do? We are sometimes we are obliged, obliged to make a decision. Because don't take decision is also a, a type of, it uh, 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 is like the abstention in a vote, you know, it is an action. <coughs> that is the signification that each decision contains each part of uncertainty of result. We put, in French we say a pari, I don't remember the word in English, a pari. A play, no, no. The wager. Huh? A bet. Yes. And, uh, and must, must determine a strategy to follow the action, to correct the action, and maybe if the action don't take the good way to destroy the action. It is a, to, to a, it is a necessary to understand at the limits of the power of uh, human decision. <coughs> but, Finally, <coughs> today we are in the system Earth. The system Earth is uh, not only a physical system, a biological system, a human system. The Earth are very intricated. And now it's evident in the, in the problem in the, uh, in the evolution of life. Uh, we are in the Anthropocene, in the uh, period where the human action is more important for the evolution of the life, you know. <coughs> and the Earth is a system <coughs> closed and open. It's open and life needs the, the rays of the sun to energy, you know. It's open to the galaxy, to the... Uh, solar and system and galaxy and is it closed we are closed we are the, the atmosphere the stratosphere but it is a, that's always the same problem logical problem because some people say like the, the theory of open system Bertalanffion theory uh, is very true you know we need to be open to uh, receive and to give to the environment but it's necessary to, to be close, to save the integrity and the originality of the system. We need, and and the, the frontier is, makes, at the same time, the closure and the uh, communication. But if we, take, if we see the human evolution, the process who begins in the 15th century, you know, what we can call the planetarian epoch, planetarian era, called today globalization. Planetarian era makes the connection between all the parts of the Earth with colonization, sclavage, and so on. But today, today, this system, it is a process called development, process of occidentalization, process of development of techniques, science, economics, and so on, illimited, without control, without regulation. And <clears throat> it is a great positive feedback, you know, because science produced and technique can produce today multiplication of nuclear bombs, okay, without regulations, uh, produce the 
toute deze the economy, economy without regulations going from crisis to crisis, going for <coughs> development of human antagonism and uh, fanatism, because uh, it is very interesting that uh, in this type of development, it is not only material, technical, scientific, but it is a development of human madness, in the sense of fanatism, of human unconsciousness. I remember when I was young, because of the ten years before the Second uh, World War, uh, all politician people, people were well, somnambulist, you know, going to the world with the total intentions of the dangers of the, of the world. You know, you know uh, madness, unconsciousness, and uh, uh, productivity, and uh, destruction of the biosphere, too. You have all those processes, and we go, we go with the catastrophe. We cannot predict the catastrophe, but it is impossible if we don't if we don't find the regulation of change of way, we go to many catastrophes. <coughs> and in the point of systemic point of view, it's very interesting that system Earth, system as you, you know, a system a mondialized system Earth. Yeah. It's enabled to treat its fundamental problems, its mortal or living problems. It's enabled to treat a problem of uh, biosphere, ecology, degradation of biosphere. It's enabled to treat the problem of the multiplication of atomic bombs. It's enabled to treat the regulation of economy and uh, the domination of uh, financial speculation in the world is enough to, to control the phenomenon of madness, uh, fanatism of types uh, in the world, actually. When a system is unable to trade its fundamental problems, what of those? Or the system disintegrates itself. Or the systems make regression and become more barbarian than it is today. Or the system is able to produce a meta system, a system with new properties, capacity of treat these vital and moral problems. The problem is to know if you have the possibility of metamorphosis. Because the concept of metamorphosis is very interesting because it is a continuity and transformation. You have a a worm who enter in a chrysalis and uh, have new properties like the flea, like the wings, you know, and many others. But it is not only a problem of insects, uh, of butterflies, a problem historical too. The Middle Age society is metamorphosed in a modern society. And with wars, with transformation, with destruction, with creation, and so on. It's metamorphosis. And uh, it is not impossible that uh, we imagine the possibility of a metamorphosis of a new type of society in the world. But <coughs> the problem is, is evident. It is necessary to change the way that. Why? It is impossible. 
Il disait possible de tirer un jeu. Oui, oui, à oui, à oui. Et puis, il est gré, gré de vélocité, you know, il était bon main, des productions, un son. Ouais. Impossible de tout changer. Mm. Mais bon. Quand nous voyons les grands historiques changes dans le passé, tout était impossible. Il y a un religieux change. Tout commence en India. By a prince, Sakyamuni, big bon Buddha, who is a new thinking, new thinking about the life, about the suffering, and this becomes a great religion now. Jesus Christ, why is isolated, why crucified, and uh, Finally, uh, this deviation in the Jew world, in the Roman Empire, three, four centuries, becomes a great religion. And it is amazing the same. Mohammed was repelled by <coughs> Mecca, refugee in Medina, exilated. And Islam becomes a creature. Well, but the democracy, democracy begins in a very little city, Greek, Thames, was destroyed a few times. But today the democracy is a general problem of the world. <laughs> Capitalism becomes become a parasite of the medieval society and uh, make a great development. Today dominate the world. Socialism becomes in the mind of Marx, of Proudhon, of some others, and uh, it's become a great movement for the best or for the worst in the 20th century. And all the great beginnings become involved very little. And uh, I think that it is so today we cannot see. Not signified that it is impossible. Maybe the seeds have begun in what this pair said. No, we don't know. In all case, <coughs> in all case, I think that uh, if we see the probability and what 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 is the signification the signification of the word probability. <coughs> Probable is for an observer, an observer in a time, in a place, with the best information, whether arriving from the past to the present, makes the projection of the trends in the future. That is a probability. But The improbable can arrive many times. The improbable is high. And uh, if the probability is as <laughs> bad for human species, for humanity, but we have the possibility of the improbable and the possibility of hope is improbable. I will, <coughs> I give you to end. Uh, an improbability in the past, very interesting. I believe this improbability because it was in the year 1941. In the autumn, in the September 41, you know that uh, uh, Hitler, the German army, you know, has invaded the Union Soviet. Millions of prisoners arrive at the door of Leningrad, arrive at the door of Moscow, and will take Moscow. But arrive, prince, the prince inexpected, that immobilize the German tanks and so on, the German army at the door of Moscow, 
un immédiatement un rêve est prématuré de euh, glaciation, winter, vous avez que congélation of the German, in the autumn of 41. But you must say, you must know, that in fact Hitler will make the attacks in June 21 and postpone the decision because the first decision was to attack in May. And why he postponed? Because Mussolini, the dictator of Italy, was in great difficulty in Greece, in this poor Greece of today, you know, with the little army Greek repel the great Italian army. And Mussolini called Hitler to help. And Hitler must, Swiss army must pass by Yugoslavia. And it is the resistance of Serbians. And Hitler lost one month to destroy the resistance of Serbians. Okay? And if he makes the offensive in May, he will take Moscow. Other, the, <coughs> the great uh, informator of Stalin, Sorg, who was a Japan informator, informed Stalin that Japan don't attack Siberia, because Japan was planning an attack United States in Pacific. And Stalin can take the army of East, you know, the army of Siberia, to put in the front of Moscow. And he designed a good general, because the other generals were only uh, courtesan general, very bad, Yukov, and to take the front of Moscow. And the 4th of December, Yukov makes the attack and uh, he will repel of 200 kilometers the German army. It's the first defeat of Hitler, the first victory of the Soviet Union. But two days after, Japan attacks Pearl Harbor and the United States entering the war. Signification in two days, probability of was a great victory during the century of uh, Hitlerian Empire or German. The probability begins improbable and the great improbability of the victory of other European people, of Allied purpose, begins to be probable. And you know, the history is not written, you know. It is the Islamic said, make two, it is written, no? It is not written. And maybe we are in an epoch of great uncertainty. Great uncertainty, but I, I repeat, with the possibility of hope. Hope is not significant, signifying certainty. Hope maintain the uncertainty, but hope open a possibility. Thank you. Questions from the audience? Yes, yeah? yes. Okay. If I can understand that. Yeah, okay. <coughs> so please, the floor is open. If you have questions or comments or whatever, we still have some time. I can start with a quick one. <coughs> Speak up and loud. Okay. Please. Thank you so much. It's great. Uh, the first thing that sprang to mind 
is when you talk about how difficult times we're living, do you think or do you have any uh, notion or projection about other civilization having ended before that we may not know? So we, we from, your, from your history, you can show how we are in a great time of progress, but there are also the big risks. <coughs> And I often ask myself, is it possible that there were great civilizations before that were destroyed of which we have no knowledge? So I wonder if you have any thoughts on that. Yes. Did you understand oh, yes. about civilizations of ancient civilizations yes. you know which also had some um, yes. other experiences? In fact, all the ancient civilizations are dead below many causes. They, uh, Many years were destroyed by enemies, you know, like Babylonian, by Persian, and so on. But uh, for some, it is very difficult to understand the Byzantine, the end of Roman Empire, who seems very eternal. Yeah, it, it was the old ideas when it was the barbarians uh, arriving and destroying the empire. But, but after, uh, it is many uh, historians don't accept these ideas because during the barbarians coming, they were integrated in the Roman uh, civilization. You know. and, uh, and it was a, a civilization very strong because it has the possibility to uh, ask. The edict of Caracalla gives the citizenship of to all the inhabitants of the empire, and you have the imperator of Spain or of all the other countries. You have a, a, it was a cosmopolitan empire. You know. But other cause, it was uh, the Roman peace, because the, the war uh, was the producer, the producer of slavery, of the works. And with the Roman peace, no more slaves, no more slaves, because, and, and, uh, and uh, there are many Romans liberate slaves. And, uh, and, no, and it was the problem of work, and uh, they were obliged to, to, to put the uh, countrymen obliged to remain in the earth, you know, and it is not, and the Roman Empire don't find a capitalist development, you know, uh, economical development. And, uh, but finally, finally yeah, it is uh, many causes. But Montesquieu says a, a beautiful, complex thinking. He says that the cause of the greatness and the decadence of romance are the same. It is the social conflicts. It is like a, a social conflicts is a good vitalization in a democracy, by example. But if the social conflicts become too, too strong, they are destroyed. And they say that. But, you know, but many people were saying why the Maya Empire in Mexico. Is dead. So many, you have ecological interpretation. You, have a, you don't know, but in all in all case, uh, in all case, it is not. It is. Not, it don't exist a principle of immortality of the empire. In all cases, the finally cause of destruction inside or outside come. And when the, the destruction comes from outside and inside, the destruction is coming. Yeah. <clears throat> You've spoken of the idea that emergence gives us the possibility of hope. Is it your view that we do not speak enough about emergence because we are unaware of it or because we pay no attention to it? Are we unaware of emergence or don't we pay attention to it? So should we speak more about emergence? Yes. yes. No. Okay. No. For me, you know, emergence is a more important 
fact of all the problem of system of organization. Because even when we begin with uh, the, a, a molecule of water, two atoms of hydrogen and one of oxygen, water has property it would not find in oxygen and uh, hydrogen. And uh, I think that uh, the more evident and the more mysterious fact of uh, of universe, you know, because uh, uh, you have to, two things of, of the, in the universe. You have emergence; it is one of some factors, you know, making the encounter of two molecules, for example, to make a macromolecule or many molecules to make life, you know, a new organization. But in the life, you have the problem of creativity of life. And creativity of life it is the contrary of creationism, because creationism signifies intelligence before the creative. Because I am like Spinoza. Spinoza saying that creativity is not in a God exterior to the world. Creativity is inside the nature, you know, power and inside nature of life. And it's evident that the creation of, uh, for example, of liver, of brain, of wings, of that, significa a direct emergence, new qualities, new qualities, new properties. No, maybe I don't speak enough for that, but I think that it is a fundamental phenomenon of the world, material world, and biological world, and human world. <clears throat> One more question? No? Then, thank you, and let's proceed to the last question. Zimmerman will now hold the laudatio for you. And uh, if I would like to introduce him, so I should also say many things. I say only one thing. He is a translator of the six volumes work, Lambeto, into German. And so this is the first volume. And the second is just in the making, together with. Uh, Cecil, with Cecil Malaspina. And, uh, okay. Okay, so. 